Hold on. Give me a second. All right. Hi, people. Let people come in. I'm wearing my Florida best. Wearing my just Dowit hat. This is an upstream hat. We're actually going to start selling them soon. Um, so if people want to buy it, it's coming out. We'll give away a few for free. But uh, we're um, it's a good hat. What was that sound? That was weird. All right. Um, all right. Let's let a few people come. A few uh, housekeeping things while we're letting people show up. I think the first thing is um, we have, I'm trying to think of the events coming up. Okay. So we have a pretty big product launch tomorrow on Upstream. Um, obviously, everyone here keeps a secret, but it's coming out at noon tomorrow. We're building, we're launching a product called the Upstream Collective. Um, it lets any community on Upstream sort of spin up a DAO. So obviously, that's why the hat and why I've been talking about DAOs a lot. Um, so that's coming tomorrow. Pretty excited. The NFT community on Upstream is going to be the first one that can do it. Uh, so if you want to experience it, join the NFT community. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty exciting. We built like a whole DAO in a box. So you you don't need any technical skills to like create the smart contract sort of. And you, get, you go and all the voting and the treasury all is in one place. So pretty excited about that. That's coming tomorrow. We're going to do an event to talk about it. I think at like three o'clock tomorrow. And then the NFT community on Friday is where we're going to start talking about what to, you know, what we do with it. Um, all right. So that's that. Other things next week, I scheduled our next WT event, WTF event, which is going to be about um, uh, airdrops. You know, after the ENS airdrop, I think a lot of people are interested in airdrops. And, and you know, there was this document that went around, I think, last week uh, of like, you know, potential airdrops that are coming. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, we have LG, I think his last name is Duche or du Duket. I don't know how to pronounce it, um, but he's the founder of the First Mint. Um, so if you're an OG NBA Top Shop person, you probably know the First Mint. So he's coming, he's going to talk. And then we're looking for more topics. So any topic people like want to know more about, just send me here. You could add to the, you know, the comments here. You can message me directly. But if there's like a topic that you keep hearing and you're like, I have no idea what that is and I'm too lazy to research it. Come, we'll do it. I want more topics. So I have a, a long list of things we wanna do, but I'm always uh, uh, willing to add more. Um, or if there's a topic we did and we didn't go deep enough, also send it to me, we'll, we'll go deeper. Um, okay, enough enough for me. Uh, virtual worlds, that's a good one. I like that. Uh, maybe like virtual real estate, we'll do, uh, we'll do a chat about that. That's a good idea. We talked about metaverse, but it's a little bit different. Um, I like that. Okay, enough from me, because that's not why anyone is here. Let me bring up Gabby. Gabby, you're gonna get a button that says go live and then come up here and we will talk. Hello. Hey, how are you? What is going on? Long time no see. It's been like two weeks. No see, yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for coming on. Um, we finally got to meet in person for the first time um, at NFT NYC uh, twice, I think, where we were also at the Washington Square Park thing, um, which was yes. a very good get together. Thank you for putting together. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, OK, uh, for those that don't know who you are, can you give your quick background? Yes, sure. Also, um it was funny hearing what you were saying at the dinner you were at of asking people kind of like their experience in the space because earlier this morning I was at a conference and I was talking about Web3 to all of these boomers who don't know what it is and I did a similar thing like asking questions and it's very cool to see like the spread of people across the space and like all the different backgrounds that are coming into it. Um, we're early. My background, I mean, yeah, very early. It's funny because I was here a year ago on Upstream um, when I was somewhere else yeah. and like my story has evolved since then, which is really cool. Um, my background is, and I'll try and relate it to web three. Uh, I'm from Santa Barbara in Southern California, but I like to say that I grew up online. I spent a lot of time like playing video games, like Minecraft and RuneScape. I was on Tumblr a lot as a teenager. I had like a big blog and that's how I learned how to code and things like that. And so always grew up like with online friends, existing in online communities, et cetera, et cetera. I studied CS and philosophy at Stanford and I worked in the virtual reality lab there and was continuing to learn about how people interact with technology. 
straight out of school, I went into early stage consumer investing at Chapter One, which is a seed stage fund based in LA. And then I spent a year at Bessemer Venture Partners, which is multi-stage and multi-sector, but I was on their early stage consumer team. And that was the last time that I was in upstream. About yeah. like two or three months ago, I moved to join the team at TCG or the Turnin Group to focus on their early stage investments at the intersection of consumer and crypto. Quick background on TCG, they're a decade old firm, have always been focused on digital consumer. So things like Twitter, Pandora, Surfline, Meat Eater, Food 52. My favorite case study is they bought up 50% of Barstool Sports, brought in the new CEO and basically turned it into the huge enterprise that it is today. They're in their third fund. In their first, they did the seat of OpenSea. Second, did Dapper Labs, the top shot. And then in their third, did uh, the, led the Series A of Zed Run. And now we're really tripling down on the space. So precede C, Series A, um, and that's the team that I joined. So that's where I am now. Yeah. And I feel like you've been also just like, you're writing. I've seen your writing everywhere also. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do more. I have like eight half finished things that I just need to put out, but I need to like lock myself in my room over Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I'll have some more. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like I've seen like your your writings before. Not not the one, not something that's coming out. I'm just saying I'd like you you've been sort of a vocal web three slash internet communities person on the internet for the past like I guess a year and a half, two years, three years. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Time doesn't yeah. make sense anymore. Two years maybe. Yeah. It feels like <laughs> it feels like everyone has just like accelerated their career. Like it doesn't take a long time to be an expert in like in web three. So it's like, instead of putting in the 10,000 hours, you could put in like a thousand hours and you'll probably get the same place. Um, yeah, I, I will caveat though. Like I'm definitely not an expert. I am new to the space. Um, and I can talk about like what got me into the space and why I decided to move into it full time. But I'm just learning just like everyone else is. And I think if there's anything that I am good at, it's being a translator between web two and web three, because I'm, I am new to the space and I understand both sides quite intimately. And I obviously remember what it felt like to get into the space and like what the magic moments were, but also what the hard parts were. And so like, those are the things that I try and focus on now. Yeah. But it's also like, it's also that thing where it's like the job, like for like a big corporation where it's like needs five years plus of like NFT experience. And it's like, that doesn't exist. So yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, it's also one of those type of things where like, you know, you just you spend enough time here. You're 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 an expert compared to someone who has no idea what this is. So um, that's helpful. Okay, so we, let's talk about Web three a little bit. What before we go into what it means? Are there any resources that you've read that like are better? Are there any like articles that someone can maybe drop into the comments that yeah, you, you well, would say like you got to start? I have, a, I have a reading list that is literally called. Gabby's Web3 reading list. I'll try and find the link. I'll do it on my phone. Um, I put it together selfishly, just trying to save the stuff that I loved to read. It's just like a notion doc that I update almost every single day. Um, someone will, someone will find it. If you say, if you say it, someone can Google it and find it. Yeah. Oh, see already. There it done. is. Oh, what's up, Bobin? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's sorted. I, I have like stars on my favorite reads, like the things that resonated with me the most. But when I send it to people, I recommend they start from the bottom and work up because it's in chronological order that way. So the very first thing I have is the Ethereum white paper. And then as you move up, you kind of see how the space has evolved too, which I think is really interesting. Okay. Awesome. I wanted to start with that because I always end with that. And then it's like, you don't get, you don't like, you know, some people have things to do and they don't say the whole way. And I think this is helpful to start with. All right. So yeah. let's talk about Web3. What's Web1 and Web2 before we talk about Web3? Yes, yes, that's how I always start it. So um, basically, I, I have my spiel. So the rant is beginning now. Basically, <laughs> the web was created in 1989 with this vision of an open and decentralized network of information where users were in control and not platforms. And the reason I say that now and so clearly is I think a big misconception of the space is that Web3 and crypto is new technology, but also a new value system. Like somehow it has turned into like a really political thing. Um, it is new technology, but the values are exactly the same as when the internet first started. Open and decentralized where users are in control. So you can think of open protocols like HTTP, SMTP, things like that. 
And we saw companies emerge during this time, like Google, Yahoo, and Amazon. And so this is what we can think of as web one. It's read only. And honestly, the consumer experience is not that great. Yesterday, I saw this old talk from the Today Show in like 1990 of people trying to explain what the internet is. And they're like, it's like a computer billboard. And like, no one had any idea. And so basically what I'm trying to say is like when web one was created, it wasn't designed to be used the same way that we use the internet today. Basically what happened over the next couple of decades, essentially until the present is consumers migrated from the open services that I mentioned to more centralized ones, just because they were more sophisticated and had a better consumer experience. And this is like the tricky part because I think the internet is the best invention of our century. And so it was really good when we moved from web one to web two, because billions of people came onto the internet and got access to all of its technology. And like, that's an amazing thing, but it's also hard because web two or kind of like the platform economy is when we saw companies like Facebook and Instagram and like the big giants. And when you have platforms like that at the top, it becomes harder for individuals and groups and businesses to innovate and create new technology online without fear of those centralized platforms taking control. So it's got like pros and cons. And this is a problem that we still see today, but I think honestly, we've just grown so accustomed to it that we like ignore it. One problem that's a really good example is Apple continuing to, to take a 30% cut from all revenues that come through the app store. Like 30% is insane. The other example I always give is like, over the last decade, we've all seen how the role of the individual in value creation has grown in importance, like creator economy, influencers, whatever. Marketplaces like Kickstarter, Patreon, Substack, Cameo, all of these types of things emerged to let us fund the people and products and information that we consume on a daily basis. And so when we think about it as individuals, we're already building the networks we use every day. We're funding them and we're operating them. We should be able to collectively own them too. And that step is what brings us to Web3. So essentially, the way I explain Web3 is it combines the decentralization of Web1 with the powerful consumer experience of Web2. And essentially, will finally be a level playing field for individuals and groups and businesses to create things online and actually have ownership over what they do. I like that. Um, yeah, because if you didn't have, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. Like, if you didn't have Web2, you wouldn't have you basically wouldn't have people like with like not everyone's technical like i don't i get on an airplane i don't know how it works i just get on in miami and i get off in new york and i'm there and i'm like i pray that somebody on the flight knows how it works but i don't really know how it works i use yeah. the internet i don't know how it works my co-founder michael who just joined would probably make fun of me but he'll be like you really don't understand how the internet works or computer works um but that's the thing, like Web2 was needed to some degree for people to basically like actually be able to access and and, and, and use the internet. Um, yep. So what are the best, like are, are the best parts of Web2 gonna be the user experience and then the decentral, cause I've always said that like, you know, for example, the one way you could like hinder Facebook and like, you know, make them take consumer, like user, concern seriously is if you made it really e easy for people to port their graph anywhere. Like if I could just take mm -hmm. out all my friends and their emails and everything from Facebook and I could bring it anywhere and then Facebook will start to take all that stuff serious. And until then they know they have you locked in because you can't take your stuff anywhere. Um, I imagine decentralizing means like you own your stuff. I'm playing Fortnite and I have a car. I can take it into another world and another game and this and that. And I, I could take it any, I own all my stuff. Is that the big difference in the end of the day is like just the, the ownership? Yeah, I think a lot of it, honestly, we are not even going to realize on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we are very, very early and obviously I'm biased because I'm at a consumer fund, but I think the most powerful applications of Web3 will be the consumer experiences. And so my partner, Jared, has this like analogy that I think is funny and it kind of connects like how we were in Web1 to where we are now. We're both stages were like very highly technical and the consumer experience wasn't good. Like, let's be honest, the consumer experience in Web3 is not good right now. MetaMask has a fundamental usability problem. I could go on. Um, but Jared's example is we don't go on Spotify and say like, wow, thank God for AWS for powering Spotify. And now we can listen to the music we love. No, we just use Spotify. 
And I think the future of Web3 is going to be powered by crypto networks because it aligns incentives in a way that allows us to grow fa faster and create more reliable networks that are more anti-fragile. But it's not like we're going to be like, thank God for blockchain all the time. So of course, yeah. there are going to be the highly technical people who, don't, who do know how to interact with these platforms and write smart contracts, whatever, but that's not going to be the masses. Um, and it's why I care so much about making the space more accessible now. And it's why I love what you guys are doing too. Yeah. Um, so does that mean there's a web four that comes? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> Cause like, if you think about it, web one was like the technical people. Web two was like the masses. Web three is again, the technical people. It sort of means that web four is going to be, is actually going to be the combination. I mean, maybe I'm just oh, making oh, that I up. What you mean. I mean, if you put it that way, I'm investing in web four now. <laughs> We're investing <laughs> in consumer applications of web three. Got it. Um, and so, like the examples that I already listed, like OpenSea, Dapper, yeah. Zed, are really good examples of investments we've been making so far that um, I can't really announce yet. We actually call it Web 2.5. I just saw a comment, um, basically <laughs> like bridging the gap between Web 2 and Web 3. Like, how do you onboard the next 10, 20, 100 million consumers into the space? Yeah. No. It's... A really good way to think about it yeah. is like. Sorry to interrupt. Like the number of active users in DeFi is four million. The number of people on MetaMask is ten million. The number of people on social apps is like three billion. Those are the people we're building for. Yeah. No, and that's something we've been saying. Like, like when I asked the question, like how many people here have joined a DAO um, at that that dinner? Like, I think if we do our jobs right, when we, when we, the thing we launch tomorrow is like, will a lot of people's first DAO will be ours, and like, and and will be like the tools that we put out there. And that's really exciting because, you know, we are our, our secret weapon is, is Sarah and her ability to explain complex uh, technical things. We, we literally have a thread going right now. Say again. Sorry, what'd you say? I just read Sarah's most recent piece. It's so fire. Oh, yeah. No, she's she has a special ability to explain really uh, complicated things very simply. Um, but so, yeah, no, I think that's that's really interesting. Uh, what else should people be thinking about when they're thinking about Web3 is, you know, like, or maybe where are the, like, the opportunities? There's a lot of people here that are founders or operators, and maybe they're thinking about like, all right, I, works at, I work at Airbnb right now, or I work at DoorDash, and I'm like, I'm thinking of starting my own company, or I think getting into Web3. What, where do you see the biggest opportunities? I know you have a very popular like web three job board there's a little plug for you but like web web three job board but like if you're starting if you're joining where do you think the opportunities are right now yeah i'll tell you like just personally where i'm really interested um and then also if you are just like looking for opportunities in crypto so the areas that i'm spending the most time are identity in web three so like we're spending more and more of our lives online and our digital ide identity is becoming more and more important. And so how do we express that? Um, the social apps that have reached mass scale so far are all about sharing real world experiences online, right? Facebook is for your real friends. Instagram is taking real photos. Um, we have so many digital experiences now. We take screenshots, we watch live streams, we buy NFTs, we follow creators, all of these digital experiences. We don't have platforms to actually share those. And in my view, that's why the internet is so lonely. Um, so identity in Web3 is very important to me. And then also financial literacy in the space. So rabbit hole is a good example. Rainbow is a really good example, really working to educate newcomers into the space. Um, if you are someone looking to like find opportunities in the space or like make money in crypto, um, first I would read my reading list. I would check out my job board and then rabbit hole and layer three are two places you can go where you can kind of like do work for different protocols and platforms and earn those native tokens, which I think is a really cool way to get started. Yeah. Okay. Another question, because I feel like it's relevant. Where does the metaverse play in web three? Like if someone's saying like, is that different? Is that the same? Could it be this? like, where does it fit in? For... Yeah, I, I mean, it's so easy to like get tripped up on all of these terms and it's like almost not They're all made it. up. It's all I made think, up. <laughs> I think Web3 would be the umbrella term of like what powers all of this technology, right? It's like the level playing field where it's like the decentralized nature, but really powerful consumer experience. And then the metaverses are like the always on real time digital ecosystems and economies. And there are like lots of them. Um, I actually don't spend a ton of time on metaverses like Sandbox and Decentraland. I probably should, um, but 
I, I like spending time on just like other games and things like that. So things like um, Branch and Minecraft and stuff like that that I mentioned. Yeah. I think those classify as metaverses as well because totally. um, it's like thinning ecosystems. And yeah, I think when when the metaverses start having like fun games, they're going to be even more popular. Um, yeah. Like like Wilder World, they're going to have racing in the beginning of the year. And like when you yeah. can race against people and like have fun, I feel like people are going to spend more time there. Um, totally. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, this stuff is, is just really fascinating in terms of like, um, like, okay, so do you right now, obviously, NFTs are really hot. Do you think we're, I mean, obviously, you're investing on this, so I, I can guess your answer. But do you think that um, we're in like the first inning? Or like, are we in a bubble? Because it feels like some days we're like, that should not be worth that thing. Like that thing is not worth that pudgy penguin is not worth $20,000. But at the same time, it feels like, wow, there's so few people here. And uh, and like this is obviously where the world's going when you start to really go down the rabbit hole. So where are, are we in a weird moment right now where things are either overvalued or undervalued? Like, how do you think about this stuff? Yeah, we're definitely in a bull market. And I think a lot of things are overvalued. And my words of advice is like buy things you love join DAOs you love don't do anything because you think you're going to make a lot of money especially as regulation starts to crack down like you're probably won't make a lot of money um i don't think we're in a bubble i think like the infrastructure that powers all of this is very real and it's very important and i think even as we get out of the bear market like the ecosystem is even going to be bigger than when we first entered it um, so I wouldn't call it a bubble, but like for sure we're in a bull market and things are absolutely insane. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think, is there any other questions that you think like have people, any other good questions people have asked you about web three when you've talked about it before that you think is worth mentioning here? Yeah. I don't know if it's a question, but like the last thing that I think is an important conversation to have is a lot of people preach web three as like a silver bullet to solve all of the internet's problems and they also preach it as like an inclusive and accessible solution that like changes the way that we interact online and i don't think either of those things are true um it does offer like decentralized systems do offer a much better approach than centralized ones and we're off to a really good start and that's why i'm so excited to be in this space but inclusivity and accessibility in this space is really really important and the last thing that I would want to do as like a voice in this space is create a whole new ecosystem that is like just as inclusive, just as exclusive and like about money and wealth as the one we had before. So I think the best way to like fight against that is to have conversations and bring folks into the space and make room for all different perspectives, like regardless of what background you're coming from or if you're technical or not. So um, there's a lot of people working on that. Kinjal Shaw just posted this like amazing read about inclusivity in Web3 that I would definitely recommend reading. I think I just put it on my reading list. Let me check. <laughs> yes, it's like second from the top. And that's like my recommended reading for the week because I think it's a really important conversation that we should be having more. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely... It's definitely tough when I sometimes do like Zed horse giveaways, which I do uh, Friday. Um, I breed because I have so many horses. I just breed them, and uh, sometimes I do giveaways. I sometimes make it like, hey, you've you have to never have had a horse, or you yeah. are a female person in tech or in person. Like I try to give it to people who you know. I try to like at least make the odds a little bit better in the favor, you know, yeah. of the giveaway. Yeah. But um, okay, last question, and then we just have uh, I believe just one breakout. Um, and we just always try to, you know, so people meet each other. Um, what's something you need help with right now? You know, I probably asked you this a year ago when you were on. Uh, we always ask, what is, you know, what do you need help with? We started upstream around giving and getting help. We like to keep that as our sort of ethos. Um, what do you need help with? You know, you got a handful of people here that maybe someone can help you. That is a great question. I am trying to write more and I don't have as much time as I used to to really like sit down and grind out pieces. Um, but I do have a network that like I have good distribution and something I would love to do more is like co-write pieces with a bunch of people who have like different perspectives. And so maybe if anyone wants to like slide into my DMs with a piece they've been writing and like have thoughts on and we could collaborate on it. Um, that's a good one. That's a, that's a good one. I, as someone who used to write a lot 
like a yeah. lot, a lot. Um, I found someone who was that for me. Uh, her name's Ellen De Silva. She used to be yeah. on Twitter. Oh, so Ellen, you know Ellen. So when I started writing, I used to write a blog called Alex's Tech Thoughts. It's still in, in the internet. And there's like seven years of like four posts a week. And there's short posts. Um, but uh, anyway, she became my like editor collaborator. And then we wrote a book together. So it is, um, it's not Harry Potter. Don't, don't rush to get it. But uh, <laughs> it's called uh, Pitching and Closing. Um, but anyway, the long and the short of it is uh, really helps to have uh, a co-writer. And then uh, my mom was like our editor. So she would just like edit cool. the pieces. Love so, that. Yeah, you know, I got to do a little of that. Anyway, Gabby, thanks so much for doing this. That was awesome. I feel like I understand Web3 a little bit more just because, you know, a lot of these are me trying to learn more. Honestly, it's not for anyone else here. It's just me. Um, <laughs> so I really appreciate it. We're going to do one breakout. It's just going to be five minutes. We'll be done at 331. Um, and uh, yeah, Rishi, I think uh, someone dropped the link before. Uh, so if you just scroll up, it's like in the beginning. Uh, maybe some uh, Pavan could drop it again. Uh, but all right, I'm going to start the breakouts. It's going to be one match. If anyone has any technical issues, just come to the lobby. I'll be there the whole time. And Gabby, thanks so much for doing this. This is awesome. Thanks so much. All right. Starting right now.